So here we go, this is a van tour after travelling and living in our van for a whole year. We bought this X ambulance in June 2019 and we spent an entire year converting it into this beautiful home on wheels. And if we don't mind saying ourselves, we do think this is the best camper van conversion from ambulance to home that we've ever seen. So this ambulance is a 2011 Peugeot Boxer 3 litre diesel and the reason we bought an ambulance in the first place is because we wanted something that was partly ready to go. So it had windows, it had insulation, it had electrics and most importantly it had that powerful engine that we needed to allow us to get to amazing places such as this halfway up a mountain. When we bought this van it was a fully functioning ambulance. Everything inside was very clinical. One thing that we knew is we wanted our van to feel like home. So in order to do that we had to take all the ambulance stuff out so we could work with a blank canvas. It was a big learning process for both of us as we wanted to do everything ourselves. But before we show you inside, let us introduce ourselves. We are Callum and Roxana, Scottish and Polish full-time van lifers. We post a video every Monday sharing our life on the road. The good things, the bad things, the amazing places and the awesome people we meet. If this sounds like your kind of thing, please consider subscribing, liking this video. We appreciate all the support. We are so excited for you to join us on this adventure. So now all the introductions are done, I think it's about time that we showed you guys the inside of the van. The most exciting part, shall we? Yes. Yeah, so welcome to the inside of our van, the best part of our van, the part of the van that we are most proud of. Um, I think it feels very much like us. One thing we should say, as I said, we've been living in this van for a whole year. Now after a year you could expect us to find things that we don't like about the van, we'd speak to other van lifers and there's always things that they would like to change after a year. We're in the fortunate situation, but pretty much on the whole, the van is the way we want it. So I think the best place to start the van tour is in one of the most important places of the van, and that is the kitchen. We have a decent sized kitchen area. We have a countertop here, which we use for cooking and prepping foods, but we have our sink area here. We have a decent sized sink. I'm not sure exactly how many liters the sink is. Doesn't really matter. It's big enough to hide a lot of dirty dishes in. But we have a very simple water system. We have a 75 liter water tank, which is connected to a filter, which goes into our six liter water pump, all running 12 volts electricity. That then flows into an accumulator tank, which flows into our, uh, our tap here, and we get good, decent pressure of cold water. However, if we want to do the dishes, we need hot water. So we came up with an idea to use an outdoor shower unit here on the side of the, the van next to the door, so that when we're running that hot water unit, which runs on uh, LPG, that we keep the door open to let help ventilation. So to operate the shower, super simple, open the door wide, give it plenty of ventilation. We All we have to do is take our shower head. Yes, we have a shower. We will talk about that later. Press the button on the shower and we have instant hot water. So any of the water that flows down the sink is collected in a 25 litre grey water tank, which we will empty when it's full. So it's time to talk about the second part of the kitchen and that is our cooking area. Again, nothing fancy. We have a two burner gas hob, which we start simply as that. Nice, uh, generous area for preparing food and chopping vegetables. Now underneath the worktops, we have our 12 volt fridge. It can either be used as a freezer or a fridge. Right now it's a fridge, works perfect for us. And when it comes to storage in the kitchen, uh, it's important that we can carry as much food as possible. It means we can essentially live off grid as long as possible. But we have storage everywhere. We've got cutlery drawers, junk drawers, dry food drawers. We have space up here for spices, so our own spice rack. We have a fruit basket here. And up here, again, plates, pots, more glasses than we need, bakery equipment. I don't even know what's up here. Just more stuff. Um, here we have more dry goods, pastas, and more here. One of the most important things we need, and that is a recycling bin. And our little bin is just kept behind here, underneath the sink, where it should be. So if you like our drawers and cupboard doors and worktops, and you want to buy them, too bad because we made it all by ourselves. 
a lot of the materials are upcycled, so it's just stuff that we found lying about, pallets, etc. Um, and we prepare them very simply. Take the wood, you burn it quite harshly, you take a wire brush to scrape away all the soft wood, and, and then we painted it and, and scraped it down, just to give it this old wood effect. It's a good idea if you're on a budget and you know you want to make something look rustic. So welcome to our second most important space in the van, which is this living area, slash office, slash dining room, slash library. This is where we spend the most time and for us it was really important to have lots of space where we can comfortably have four people over for dinner, uh, lots of colours. Pretty much most of the things here are upcycled as well, which is really, really important for us. So this table is something that we are really proud of because we made it ourselves out of whiskey bottles. And as I said before, this is where we eat, this is where we work. And we can also use it as a way of securing some things by folding the table away. Voila. Another thing that we really wanted to prioritize when it comes to our van conversion is a whiskey cabinet. And I know that this is really random, but we love whiskey so much as we've been working in the whiskey industry for years. Um, and unfortunately, when we left Scotland two months ago, we didn't bring enough whiskey. Everything we've had, we've shared with friends that we met on the road. So at the moment, it's more of a schnapps and wine cabinet, but we love it. One thing that you don't see in van conversions very often are log burners. And we knew that we wanted to have one of these as we also want to travel in winter. This works really well in really, really cold winters and there is nothing better when you sit on the couch, it's cold outside, you have the fire on and then we whiskey. It's perfect. And guess what? We also burn whiskey bottles. One thing I almost forgot to mention that this is actually not only our source of heating, but we can cook on it. There is also an oven. Perfect. So the stove is great, but obviously we can't use it everywhere. So as a second source of heating, we have a Chinese diesel heater. Uh, we don't use it very often, but it is great as a backup system. Did we mention that our van is unique? Well, one aspect that we think is really unique, something that we've never seen done in any other van, is in fact our bed setup. Our bed is located up here, and we actually have a double bed crammed into this small space. If you're thinking of converting a van, and you want to steal this idea, please do, happy to help. But the way we operate our bed is dead simple. Here, pull this out, pull this down, this folds down, just grab the mattress which is made of foam, that folds out the way, like this. We just grab it here, and this slides out. We have a ladder up there you can use to climb on the worktop, and we have a full double bed, and I can't stress enough, this is a comfy bed. And probably the best part about this bed setup is the fact you don't really have to make the bed in the morning or move about cushions. To put it away, fling the ladders and the covers up the back, lift the mattress up, slide that back down, just push it back, engage that, and then start your day. Round right about the bed, we actually have more storage, this time for clothes. So on this side, Rox keeps all her clothes, probably a mess. <laughs> yep. Uh... Yep, everything's trying to fall out. Uh, and on this side, I keep mine, probably a bit tidier, a wee bit. Um, and then when the bed's folded down, you have access to more storage at the back. It's a wee bit harder to get to, but it works for us. If somebody asked me five years ago, hey, would you like to live in a van? I'd be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I really like my comfort and that includes easy access to toilet and a shower. So when Kala was trying to convince me to live in a van, I had one very important criteria and that was toilet and a shower. We managed to find a space to do it and it's right here. Kala already explained how the shower works so I don't have to go through that again, but you can see that it's it's quite spacious. Uh, we hang the jackets here, we have the camel cool toilet down here, and we have this beautiful shelf that's about to fall off. It's been like that for two weeks though, so I think it should be okay. So one really important thing for us when we were designing this van was obviously the electrical setup. We knew we wanted to be completely off-grid, not reliant on uh, electrical hookups, and we do that in two ways. First of all, and most importantly probably, is our solar setup. We have 480 watts worth of solar panels on the roof and they're connected to two 
105 amp hour batteries and that does us all for this for our 12 volt system now if we need to charge laptops camera batteries etc we use a 3000 watt inverter and that inverts 12 volt to 240 volt which seems to do us perfectly fine there is one other way that we um, can charge our batteries and that is when we're driving we have installed a DC to DC a battery charger which is up to 20 amps now when we're in the sunshine like we are today solar is absolutely perfect but the DC to DC is crucial for us particularly when we're back in Scotland and we're not getting all this glorious sunshine and that brings us to the last part of the tour which is the front of the van we spent so much time driving around so we wanted to make sure that this feels really comfy and cozy as well which you can see lots of nice plants we also have lots of stuffed animals uh, and that's pretty much that we hope you enjoyed this video we hope you have maybe learned something or if you're if you're deciding to to do van life or convert in a van yourself or maybe you even live in a van or you have your own van and you you maybe found some tips or some tricks mm -hmm. some inspiration from this video that you know we we hope that's the case so that'd be great um and if you have any questions yeah. about anything uh, feel free to leave the comment you can message us on instagram as well uh, so yeah we're an open book don't be ha shy just give us yeah. a message we're happy to help now one last thing we should mm -hmm. maybe mention is rox and i started up a kind of funding page because essentially we're broke right we have no money um and we thought you know, we're a small channel there's no we've got no income um so we thought maybe some of you guys want to support us so we started a page called buy me a coffee but instead we changed it to buy us a whiskey <laughs> it's more fitting for us so if you have some spare money um if you've maybe watching our videos for a wee while now and you want to contribute maybe to the editing costs i think it's about 50 pounds a month for us to put uh, at least edit these videos not to mention the fuel costs and all, all that all that boring stuff yeah but if you do if you made it this far in the video um, you want to help us out please uh, consider yes that we donation the, the links below mm -hmm. you'll find it there exactly so thank you so much for all your support um we hope you enjoyed this week's video and we're going to see you next week from an island of kirk in croatia so yeah, yeah. pretty special that place huh? yeah anyway thank you guys hope you enjoy and see you next monday bye bye